If I didn't already, we greet those of you joining us online, whether it's by KITV, HSBN, uh, YouTube, Facebook, we bless you. And we welcome you as part of Foundation, the Foundation for Life family. Well, turn with me to two parts. Um, Matthew, Exodus 25, verse 1 to 9, and Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. We've been looking at, um, we've used the scripture quite a bit, the Exodus 1. Um, but we'll add to it Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. So Exodus 25, verse 1. And it says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. Someone say an offering. An offering. From everyone who gives it willingly. Someone say willingly. Willingly. See, there's no force. There's no pressure. There's no threats. There's no extortion here. Someone say willingly again. Willingly. With his heart, you shall take my offering, and this is the offering you shall take from them, gold, silver, bronze, purple, blue, scarlet thread, fine linen, goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, badger skins and acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and the sweet incense, onyx stones and stones to be set in the effort and in the breastplate. And let them, that's the people, right? Make for me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I shall show you. That is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings. Just you shall make it. So what we, why we read this here is um, we saw that God's, the work of God is dependent on his people, we could say. So the provision comes through God's people. Amen. Do you see that? So if God wants, to, wants the church to get anything done in, in touching people, in our church, in our ministry, in our media ministry, it really comes usually through God's people. So that's why we love God's people being blessed and being enriched. Why? Because if they'll obey God, then they'll have a part in helping us do what God's called us to do as a church family. Amen? But here we said, go to Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. So it's interesting Everybody, someone say everybody. everybody, everybody could give something. And that's why it's written the way it is. It tells you if some people had gold, those who didn't have gold might have had blue. Those who didn't have blue maybe had badger skin. So someone, everybody had something. See that? So no one's left out. So Matthew chapter 2 verse 11, it says, And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, someone say treasures, treasures. they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now it's interesting, here you see the higher expensive <laughs> gifts that were given to this child. Why? Because these were magi. These were king makers. They were, these were your, your top decision makers in nations. And they came to welcome the Christ. And it's amazing. The, the, the offering they gave really sustained Jesus for years. So that's the quality. That's how, how much uh, we could say wealth was given to Joseph and Mary in, because of the birth of this child, Jesus. So again, everybody has something. And uh, some people have gold. Some people have silver. Now, some of you are hiding that under your bed at home. I'm just joking. <laughs> You know, some people have other have, um, investments and in shares. Some people have hundred dollars. Some people have a dollar. Whatever it is, you know, you have um, you submit to the Lord. Some people have talents, skills, gifts, and abilities that you can offer to the Lord. Some people are great administrators. Some people are very creative. Some people are, are administrative minded. They're great planners and organizers. All these gifts. You know, in every generation and needed by God's church. We could say needed by God for people to use those things to cooperate with the gospel. Amen. Amen. And so I love this where these scriptures show us every person. Someone say everybody. everybody. Everybody has the ability to give. And so the tithe is the 10 percent that belongs to God. Offerings is a free will offering. But you notice in, in both instances, it's a willing heart. Someone say willing again. So it's a willingness. And the beautiful thing, of course, God still promises to bless the giver. Because in Luke 6, 38, we have the scripture that says, given it shall be what? Given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. But here we preach a lot saying this. We give first from a heart of love. We give from a heart of honor, of respect, recognizing God as our source. Amen? So if you're ready to give today, if you're writing a check, write it out to Foundation for Life. 
If you're giving it online, give to, if you're giving an e-transfer, send it to info at foundationforlife.ca. You can designate if this is your, your specific tithes that is going to the general offering. If you're giving an additional offering to go to our media ministry, please designate that also. Amen. Our media ministry is growing. And so if you're giving towards that, designate that also. Praise God, and we thank you for that. Uh, we just finished the semester one of our, uh, for the second term year of our basketball program, Light Basketball Academy. That's run out of Pierre Laporte um, Middle School. And so it's about 10 to 15 year olds. And so we just finished term one. We'll be resuming semester two at the beginning of February, 2024. So thank you for helping us to be able to do that. And there's a couple, we have two or three basketball really coaches in that program who willingly gave of themselves to be a blessing to young people. And you're a part of that. Amen. Are you ready to give today? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Praise the Lord. Marco's ready to give. Anybody else? Praise yes, God. Amen. yes, yes. Just lift up your tithes and offerings as we do this. Father, we thank you today. We are so thrilled to be a part of your kingdom. We're so thrilled to do our part in in seeing the gospel change lives. And we know the gospel is free, but the channels through which it's communicated are not free. But Lord, we give ourselves and we give our time, our talents, our resources, our finances, our treasures. We surrender them to you in the form of our tithes, our offerings, our gifts of love. Thank you for using us to be a blessing. And as we've been blessed, we want to be a blessing to others. And as your people give willingly today, regardless of what it is, whether it's gold or silver, whether it's hundred dollar bills or whatever it is, or pennies, Father, I thank you that as they give, it shall be given to them. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give into their bosoms. In Jesus name, amen. amen. Say this after me, thank you, Lord. For blessing my life. For blessing my life. And, I say, and I say, all of my needs, of my needs are, met are met according to your riches, according to your riches in, glory in glory by Christ Jesus. By Christ Jesus. I, say I say money comes into my hands. Money comes into my house. Money comes into our church and into our ministry. Into our ministry. We're, expanding. We're expanding. We're touching people's lives touching for your glory. In Jesus, name. in Jesus name just by way of announcement since I have to do everything today we have uh, the um, Christmas don't forget next week Sunday is Christmas Eve service so invite someone to be with you will you do that Amen. so we have these cards if you would like to have one take one don't just to take it but you're gonna give it to someone don't take it unless you're gonna give it to someone please so give it to someone to invite them to next Sunday's Christmas Eve service, Sunday, and also our New Year's Eve service. And we're going to be having um, Mr. Shenny at Hawaii. He's going to be with us to help to lead us in a time of worship and celebration as we bring in and welcome the new year 2024. So again, our Christmas Eve celebration next Sunday and the following Sunday, Sunday morning and Sunday night for our New Year's. Amen? And if you're concerned about transportation, let us know. I'm sure there's a way you'll be able to get there. Amen? All right. Turn with me to Luke chapter, let me find it. Luke chapter 2, please. Luke chapter 2. What we're going to um, share with you today on is a message. We've been in a series entitled The Household of Faith. And what we're going to share today is peace in your family and home or peace in your home and family. I'm going to turn it around. So, so peace in your home and family. You know, if we're not careful, we in the Christmas seasons, we can get um, uh, there's a word I'm looking for. We, we can almost we can get. Um, we get lost in just the, uh, maybe we could say the aura of Christmas. And oftentimes we can miss the reality of what God wants to bring to us and remind us in this Christmas season. 
So what we're going to get to is really specifically how to establish the peace. Peace, real peace. Someone say peace. Peace in your home and in your family. You know, as I'm going to say this, let me go off a little bit. Let me say this. You know what I've realized? Whether people are in your home, whether they're in your, on the job, whether they're neighbors, they don't care who you serve if you're not in peace. If you really, if you really think about it, I remember, you can tell I do a lot of thinking about some of this stuff. People don't care about your religion if, if um, what's coming out of you isn't something that they like, isn't something that's really helping them. Does that make sense? I can, that's why now what I realize is, you know, I heard some wonderful testimonies, let's say at our um, um, Ministry of Help's um, dinner last week. Realize people can be touched. My messages can be wonderful. But you know what? People see you oftentimes before they meet Pastor Colleen or I. And what is coming out of you, if it's, if it's God, it's going to be beautiful. If it's not, it can push them away even further from God. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So that's why, forgive me when I say, a lot of times people really don't care what you claim to believe. <laughs> they don't really claim about what, who you worship. If certain things aren't consistent in your life. So we're going to talk about peace today. Someone say peace. peace. We're going to look first, you know, the importance of peace, why this is so important. And as I begin, did you know, it's interesting, the Jewish people for generations, when they greet one another, have used the word what? Shalom. Interesting. So now you'll that'll have a new perspective in your mind, um, this going forward. So you know what the word shalom means? It means peace. Now, you know what the word peace also means? It means nothing broken, nothing missing. Completeness. So I thought, so when someone is greeting you like that, what are they saying? Peace. But really, uh, saying that is also almost like a prayer, a declaration. Nothing broken, nothing missing. I want complete goodness, goodwill in your life. And so we're going to look at this today because it's so important for you and on, on my life. Amen. So can you imagine that? So shalom, nothing broken, nothing missing. Completeness in your life, in spirit, soul, and body. Isn't that beautiful? So now, look at what I say. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Let's go there, please. Luke chapter 2. Talking about peace. The peace of God in your life. Now, verse 8. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly af afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Someone say all people. See, all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, here's the verse, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Someone say peace. 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 Good will toward all men. I love that. So here, what was God doing at the birth of Jesus? Jesus was making God was making an announcement to all people. What was his announcement? Peace. I've not come for war. I don't have any any animosity towards you. My heart towards you is peace, goodwill, reconciliation, harmony, unity, goodwill. Someone say peace. peace. So that's, that's what God was saying to the human family. He's saying it right here. I have no argument with you. I have no war. See that? I, I have no division. I have no disagreement. I have no conflict with you. I'm here to bring hope. I have a good heart towards you. I want you to dream. I want you to have a heart of hope and goodness and peace. Everyone got that? Because now with that now, God was establishing right there. Listen, I want you to know me personally. So we can go on in life 
together. So the word peace, look, think about this, a few definitions. Freedom from disturbance, tranquility, calmness, restfulness, quietness, peace. Turn to someone, tell them God wants you to have peace. So God came into your life, into my life to do what? Peace. To bring peace. So if you, again, remember, if we're not careful, uh, you know, one of my challenges, one of my things is, or things we like to press against is because so much Christianity has been made a religion, then it's, in many cases, it's lost its vitality. It's lost its real life. So many people, it's not even real. But you understand, in the new birth, what? We received life. And in that life is tremendous peace. When we receive Jesus, what happens? Not a religion. So it's not first up here. There's a transition. Something happened in our hearts. We received the life of God, which includes the peace of God. Everyone got that? And so... Um, Jesus, so God sent Jesus to do what? To pronounce to every person, what? I love you. My heart towards you is one of goodwill. I don't want you hurt. I don't want you in pain. I don't want you in suffering. I've got peace for you. I want nothing broken, nothing missing. In fact, in Jesus' entire ministry, Luke chapter 4, don't turn to it, verse 18 and 19, is a ministry of peace. The brokenhearted, what did he come to do? To bring healing to them. God wants peace in all of our lives. Amen. Amen. Someone t tell someone, God wants you to walk in peace. God wants you to walk in peace. He wants his peace in your life. And we're going to help you to get into that today. Amen. Look at this interesting scripture. Just a scripture, Luke chapter 6. So we're talking about peace today. Talking about God establishing you or his peace in your life. That's an interesting scripture. Luke 6, 27. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who despitefully use you. That's an amazing command, he says. This is, a, this is somebody who has the peace of God and the love of God in their hearts. And why this is so important. Now, this is another reason I believe the Lord inspired me to share this message with you. Because at Christmas time, we could say is a time for family. Yes. It's a time for families coming together. But I'm going you know for many families, it's a time of high stress. You know, it's why? Because, you know, in previ the previous year and previous years, through different challenges and conflicts and strife, then what happened? There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of bitterness sometimes. There's a lot of divisions. Relationships are strained. So oftentimes, it's a contradiction of sorts. Christmas, while it's a happy time for many people and many families, it's the, it's the most challenging times. Oftentimes they say, what do they say about even Christmas time? It's the, the highest depression levels. That's quite interesting. Why is that? It's because of the, function, the dysfunctionalities often, oftentimes that's happening in families. So that's why if we're not careful, we can go through Christmas seasons and it's almost like we're disconnected from real life. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And so, so God wants you and I to understand he's here for a reason. His real life, his real peace can be experienced in every one of our families. Amen. And he really cares. And oftentimes Christmas time is one of the loneliest times. Isn't that interesting? And I, so that's why now the church, real Christians, we have to step up and say, Lord, use me as a vehicle of your love and peace to minister. That's why we say here, nobody should be on their own at Christmas. That's why I read that scripture earlier. First thing, teaching of God's word. Number two, fellowship. So that some of your closest relationships should be with believers who you know love you and care about you. They want, don't want to take anything from you. They want to bless your life. And that's what Foundation for Life is about. Amen. If we, don't have, if we didn't have that, I wouldn't be here. If that wasn't my pursuit, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't be a part of this. See, because God really cares about your life and my life. Amen? Amen. All right, where did I say? 
Go to this one, Luke chapter 24. Just some things about the peace. Peace, and we're, then we're going to talk about how to establish this peace in your life. Luke 24, verse 36. Now, right after Jesus' resurrection, right after his resurrection, listen to this. As they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, what? Peace to you. That was his greeting to them. Peace. So you notice that was not just, you know, when we greet people, we normally say, hello, how are you doing? What was he saying? Peace. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. Complete wholeness. Completeness in your life. Amen. Now go to this other one, John chapter 40. I just want to look at a few scriptures about the peace of God, its importance, why God makes it a top priority in our life. Peace. He wants peace. Now John 14, 27 says this, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you not as the world give do I give to you. Listen to this. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He says, peace. Turn to someone, tell them God wants you to walk in peace. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. This is interesting because you're going to find out then you either have God's peace or you don't. Of course, we're going to find out, we're going to talk about that. Every believer has the peace of God in them. Whether they're allowing that peace to rule in their hearts is another thing. Yes. Romans chapter 5, turn to that one please. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. I just want to look at these things and we'll get to getting get this peace in our homes, in our families. God's proclamation, our first scripture, our main text, Luke 2, 14. God said, peace on earth. Goodwill to all men. God wants peace in your life and in your family. But you got to cooperate with this. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have what? Peace. peace. We have what? Peace. peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, that peace, man, isn't he saying... I have, there is nothing between us. Yes. We have harmony. There's nothing that is separating us. There's no sin, no guilt, no condemnation, no shame that is, gonna, that is hindering our relationship. So again, therefore, having been justified or being made righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him also, we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance, character, character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. So that means you have two things in the new birth, right? From these scriptures, you have God's peace and you have what? His love. Yes. Now, again, we're talking about real Christianity. We're not talking about the religion of Christianity. We're talking about the life of Christ in every believer. Go to this one now. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15. I'm going to talk a bit about today about establishing God's peace in your home and in your family. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your where? Yeah. In your hearts. We learned for the last few months, a few couple of months, the, your heart is your spirit. It starts there to which you are called in one body and be thankful. So again, Paul says this, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. That means if it's ruling in your heart, it should be ruling in your life. That's right. That's right. Peace. God wants peace. Now we said this, those of you who are just coming in or later, said at the beginning, the Jewish people, when they greeted one another for generations, they said the word shalom. Shalom meaning, imagine that, an expression when I meet people usually, because uh, over the week I thought, okay, well, I normally say, hello, how you doing? But when I thought about this again, when I say shalom, what am I saying? It's not just a greeting, it's a proclamation. 
It's almost a form of a prayer. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. Completeness and wholeness be to you and your family. Isn't that wonderful? In one word. So we're going to talk about this peace now because God wants peace in our lives. You know, if I think about it, think about this. How can I call myself a Christian and I cause um, angst, turmoil in other people's lives? How can, I, how can I call myself a believer if people see me and want to turn the other way? Does anybody hear what I'm saying? You know, if, 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 if they dread me coming into their presence. There's something wrong there. That's why we, I say certain things intentionally because I want you to have, understand the difference between the Christian religion and the Christian life. The two are not the same and they never meet. We're talking about this life that God wants to, wants to, be, wants to fill your life and fill your home. That's why I personalize some things. You know, I don't want to live in my home and be a person that brings turmoil and, and fighting to my wife. I don't want my children to be afraid of me. Do you see? We want and then come to church and act like everything's nice. No, I want what? Peace. Someone say peace. peace. Real peace. And so to... to um, to, to have this peace, though, to have it worked out in our lives. So, you know, we have to work on ourselves. So when we share certain things really maybe close to home, we're not just preaching because we're preaching off out there. We want to make sure that you get it because it's got to be working in our lives. This peace. This peace is not just in my heart. It's in my soul. It's in my body. It's in my relationship. It's in our home. You want peace. And when you know the conclusion I brought two years ago, there's no way God put us in a family for us to be fighting every day. I know you, many of you were smarter than that. But can you imagine? There's no way God wanted you in a family and you're fighting. Does that make sense? And especially if you're a believer. That would be no difference. That's like not being born again. God wants peace. Say it again. Turn to someone and tell them God wants peace in your home. He wants peace in your family. He wants peace in your relationships. Amen? So now, how do we do this? So, number one, we have to receive God's peace personally. Yes. Got to receive it personally. Now, we read certain scriptures just to establish when you got born again. Scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We read Romans 5, verse 1. It says, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. So when you get born again, you become a new creation. You become righteous. That's an important word around here because righteous means to be in right standing with God. It means to be free from guilt, no condemnation. Look at that. Free from sin. In other words, now, there's no, no sin between me and my heavenly father. That is what Jesus did for you. Isn't that powerful? So, but that is something you have to receive. And part of that means is this, is acknowledging our own sins. When you go acknowledging our sin, our shame, our guilt. So we acknowledge that and what we do and we receive now his, Jesus' righteousness that cleanses us from all of that and brings us into right relationship with God. I try to say it in different ways so that you get it in some way. Amen? Amen. So now, so you've got to receive the, the peace of God for yourself. And that's what, I, when you got born again, so really get this, when you got born again, regardless of what your life was, regardless of what you did, all of us were sinners. When you receive Christ, what happened? You became born again. So that's why there's a boldness. You know, that's why some people can mix it up there. Sometimes I've been accused of being, well, he's, he's full of himself. Who does he think he is? See, what they don't realize is this. I know who I am. I'm a child of God. I, don't, I can look people in the face. Why? There's no shame. There's no guilt. 
I don't have to look in my past. Why? I know my father has cleansed me. Everyone got that? Now, number two, you got to get this. You got to, you've got to receive Jesus personally and what he did for you. So that cleanses you and makes you right with God. And when you're right with God, you've got peace with God. Everyone got that? But number two, what we got to focus on this, write this down, somebody. You've got to have um, peace in your own heart and soul. And that's probably the biggest one we've got to spend some time on. So you've got to have peace in your own heart, in your own soul. And that says this, when you, how, see a lot of time what I find is this, people are not comfortable in their own skin. They're still living under a lot of guilt, a lot of shame, a lot of condemnation. And, and most of that should have been taken care of in our understanding of the new birth. So if I repeat certain things, it's because I realize people don't get something just because you said it once or twice. I keep saying the fundamental things because that's what helped me to be free from guilt and condemnation and look forward in my life. So you've got to be, you've got to get this peace in your own heart. And so by that, I mean, you have it with God. But now, how do you see yourself? What do you think about yourself? I mean, you know, we all, we're all doing out, some people call it self-talk. We're all talking to ourselves in some way or another. What do you say to yourself and about yourself when nobody is around? You know, you know what is your meditation when you're sleeping at night? You know, there's many people, they look good to you when you see them, when they talk to you. But when they go home, when they're at home at night, when the light turns out, you know, they're thinking, I'm a nobody. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. Nobody would miss me if I wasn't here. So they've got all these things. And that can get so strong in people's mind, it overwhelms them. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? So you've got to get this. It's one thing to have it know that I've got it with God. But now that will, should impact how you see yourself. What you think about yourself. So let this peace of God, that's what we said. Let the peace of God do what? Rule where? In your heart. In your heart. In your heart. So you've got to, so part of what I do, you constantly exercise what God did for me, what Jesus did for me. I'm, I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old is past, the new is come. My past is not being brought up by me. Why? Because I know who I am. The old is past, the new has come. And so you are constantly, again, the scripture said we've been justified by faith. So that means I'm just, I'm clean, I'm righteous, I'm free from guilt. I've got peace with myself. Yes. Amen. So some things you've got to say, you look in the mirror. And I'm saying to some people, they don't like what they see in the mirror. And you should. Because the scripture says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God didn't make a mistake when he made you. And no matter how you came into the world, regardless of who your parents are, no matter how people have treated you, listen, you're not an accident. You are made in the image of God. That's why we spend a lot of time repeating Genesis chapter 1, 26, 28. You're made in the image of God, worthy of dignity, value, esteem, and worth. I, I listen to me. So you've got to get this on the inside of you to know this is who I am. I, can, I live life knowing who, who I am to God and with God, but I know who I am on the inside, what he's made me to be. Everyone got that? So now you've got to get this. Um, so the love of God is in you. The peace of God is in the believer. And that means there's no room, think about this, for hate, unforgiveness, and bitterness. So first we talk, you've got to be at peace with God. You've got to have peace with yourself. If the peace of God, you major on the peace of God and the love of God on the inside of you, then you have no room. Or I should put it this way. God's love and God's peace has no room. They can't coexist with hate, unforgiveness, and bitterness. So the believer has to make sure you're keeping that stuff out of you. And why we say this? Because you're going to have many opportunities. You'll always have many opportunities to occupy, to fill your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions with hate, bitterness, and unforgiveness. If you're going to have peace with yourself and peace, next one now, is peace with your family members. 
You've got to keep hate, unforgiveness, and bitterness out of your life. Everyone got that? So now let's get to this third one. So number one, peace with God. Number two, peace with yourself. So you're walking around, you're peaceful in your own heart. You're, like, you're having right thoughts about yourself. You look in the mirror, it's not a wonderful. That you, you look real good, Carl, today. Oh, by the way, now remember I said it before when we talked about your mind. You know why people have a hard time complimenting other people? Because they don't accept themselves. They don't like themselves. You better like yourself. Are you listening to me? Because if you don't, it's almost like saying, well, God made a mistake. That's why we're big on understanding who you are in Christ. That God never made a mistake. The body that you're in, the shape that is in, the color that you are, no mistake. You are the creation of God. So this thing now, we've got to have peace with our family. Now, when you have peace with your family, you have good, godly desires for your family. Remember, peace, nothing broken, nothing missing. Completeness, wholeness, that's what I have. That's what I want for you. Go to this interesting scripture. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. So peace. Someone say peace. Peace. We've got to have peace now. We want peace in our homes. Get it first with God through the new birth. Amen. You get it with having known, having peace in your own soul. Yes. The love of God is there. The peace of God is there. You can draw on that love all the time. Yes. But here's a great scripture. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Therefore, laying aside all malice. The word malice means ill will. And he's writing to Christians. So this is what he knows. This is something we're going to be challenged with. Laying aside all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, envy, all evil speaking. Listen to this. As newborn babes. So he's not talking to old Christians. He's talking to new Christians. This is one of the first things they were commanded to go in, to walk in. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, envy, all evil speaking as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby if indeed you've tasted the Lord is gracious. Oh, you know that tells us then? If we have good, if we don't, um, if we have these things, ill will, if we don't walk in peace, we won't grow as Christians. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of Christians don't have, don't have a much of a lasting or good effect on people because they've never learned to keep ill will out of their heart towards others. And it starts at home, mm -hmm. in your home, in your family. Goodwill. So you want this peace now to go out to your family members. And you think about, you're gonna, some of you will be meeting family members, maybe haven't said some good things towards you. What we're preparing you to do when you meet your family members as a believer, that you know I'm born again. Yes. Uh, no matter what you feel like, as long as you know you're born again, the peace of God is in me. The love of God is in me. I know who I am. I'm full of God's peace. Now I can release that to other people. Why? I'm not allowing ill will. So it says, lay aside all malice, which means you can do that. So again, malice is ill will. I mean, you've had, we can all put our hands up in your heart when you thought of somebody or you see somebody, you don't have a good desire for them. Anybody can testify to that? You, you know, so you've had this, that, so it's ill will. So he says, lay it aside, which means believers have the ability to do it. So it's telling us because you can do it or you can choose not to do it. But what are we deciding to do? Lay it aside. Why? Because this is a key to walking in peace. Now, you know, think about it in your immediate family unit. That's where it starts. It's really allowing the people that you, you, you live with, right, in, in, you know, your immediate proximity, the people you live with in your, in your home space, start there. Not allowing any ill will, any malice, any unforgiveness, any hate, any bitterness 
to come out of your life. Now think about it. Sometimes we hear maybe somebody, there was someone who died in a home. And who is mainly the person who, let's say if someone got murdered, unfortunately, some homicide, whatever, who usually is a perpetrator? It's normally someone related to them, someone in the home, for the most part. Does that mean? So, so most, things, most, most of those really terrible things is done by someone close. And you know, something happened inside that caused the hate, the unforgiveness, the bitterness to grow and expand until it demanded action. Well, Paul is saying here, as a believer, you have the peace of God. You've got the love of God in you. Will you allow that peace to have expression? How? Lay aside ill will. Lay aside bitterness. Lay aside malice. Lay aside wrong feelings. That's why we spend a lot of time that you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a physical body. I don't have to accept what my feelings tell me. I don't have to. Why I am a spirit, I can tell myself what to do. I can tell my emotions, no, that's wrong. That thinking about that person is wrong and I'm not going to accept it. And I, Paul said, lay it aside. Put aside that ill will. So right in your homes, that's where it begins. Lay it aside. Will you do that? Lay it aside. And then how about this? So, but what happened when I was thinking about this, preparing this, is that what we have to do is there's people in our lives and they'll come to your mind. And one of the things you start doing is on the inside, you start blessing them. So you start, you say, you, you mentioned that person, that person come to you and you say, oh Lord, uh, let's say Tony. Lord, I bless Tony. See, what I'm doing, I'm preparing inside my soul right towards that person. See, I'm releasing God's peace towards in, on the inside. So, you know, you, you say, Lord, I bless that person. Lord, bless them. <laughs> Help them. Heal them. Prosper them. See, see, now, remember Jesus said, bless those who curse you? Isn't that interesting? Why? It's because of this mentality that he had and he was passing on to them as his followers, right? You say, Lord, you say, Lord I want them to be blessed. You say, I, don't, I, I, don't want, I, don't, I don't want them to be hurt. I don't want their lives to be cut short. Lord, bless them. So that's what's coming out of you. Why? Because you're full of the peace and the love of God. Everyone got that? So that's why you're developing a right mentality, a right heart towards your family and loved ones. And you're not allowing wrong feelings or hurts to get on the inside of you. What happened is this. When you bless, you're, re you're repelling the curse. That's why Jesus told you to bless people. Bless those who curse you. Because when they bless you, when they curse you, what happens? You're blessing, not cursing. So what happens, that, that blessing come out, coming out of you is like a force field. It's like a shield against that curse. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I said, bless those who curse you. Bless them. Don't, don't get on that side of being bitter. Don't be fighting, you know, people or family members. They're your family members for, for God's sake. Bless them. Love them. Speak to them good. No matter what they're doing. You, you stay on that side of blessing. Why? The peace of God is in you. Now, let me say this also. Now, so you've got to, um, in your words, in your actions, what's happening, you're developing a heart that you really want their best. So, again, we're talking about your family, talking about establishing peace. Someone say peace. Peace. Peace in your home. Peace in your family. So in your home where you live and also your extended family. Another thought I want, let me say this again, that you want to make sure in your home is supposed to be peaceful. The exception is every now and then you may have an argument. That is not the exception. That is, that is the exception. It's not the rule. Normal is that I'm with this person. I'm in this family. We're supposed to be in harmony. We're supposed to be in agreement. We're supposed to be having wonderful days like heaven on earth. There's supposed to be peace. I, I, I want to be with this person. I want to continue to grow and, and love. And, and when I miss it, I want to be quick to repent to my wife and say I'm sorry to my children. The same thing. I, this, that, that's the normal thing. You got, so that's why. Bear with me. We want to get this normal mentality in our homes. 
That every, anytime there's arguments and strife, you realize that's abnormal. Something's wrong here. And normally, you got to say, there's something wrong with me. That, there's something wrong here. Does anyone hear what I'm saying? You see, we're talking about peace. Turn to someone, tell them, and God, get, tell them this. God wants peace, God wants peace. In, your in your home. He really does, right? He wants peace. Now, there's something I wanted to talk as I cl come to a close here. Um, where you've wronged people, and this is a biggie, talking about peace now. Because if you're going to have peace in your home, where you've wronged people. Now, remember, I'm talking about a believer, someone who's truly born again. You've got the peace of God in your heart. You've got his love on the inside of you. That's what happened when the new birth came, when God changed your life and put his life in you, when you put faith in Jesus. Now, if that's happened, for you to have, to have this, this peace built in your home and in your relationships, you've got to make right with people that you've wronged. A lot of time, there's a lot, a lot of peace in people's homes, in their relationships, because there's been no repentance. Nobody says, I'm sorry. That was part of a mistake of a previous generation where the parents never thought to say I'm sorry to their parent, to their children. We made sure we never did that. And I still don't have, got to get rid of that mentality. So some of them still function under that mentality. You know, they'll die before they say I'm sorry to their children. But you understand, I'm not talking about what my parents believe. We're talking about what does the Bible say? What did Jesus say? That if you raise your voice incorrectly to a child, that you'll stoop down and say, man, please, I'm sorry. Baby, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. See, we're talking about, what are we talking about? Peace. Because remember, these words can go into, remember, we're big here. Be really careful. Words can get into a child's heart. And what happened? It goes, it can grow with them. Something got put into them very young. But even adults. Realize you can speak harsh words. Proverbs talks a lot about words we speak getting into people's hearts. You could hurt someone. I told you before, I'd rather you come up and slap me across my face than curse at me. Why? You know what? Those curses, words, will stay with me longer. A punch, I can usually handle a good punch. Are you listening to me? But those words can linger. They'll stay on the inside of you. And so I'm, I'm encouraging you, your home, where you need to make things right, make things right. Go to that loved one. Tell the man, please forgive me. Do whatever it takes to make things right with, with people in your home, people in your family. Amen. Offer forgiveness and kindness and love to people. And when I say that, I know there are some people we're related to. I realize there's some relationships the only way you can walk in peace is by keeping distance. I, I, so I understand that. There's some people, don't bother calling them, don't bother talking to them. You know, you've got to just keep the distance. So please, I understand that. And some of that, you, and I'm going to show you a scripture that tells us that. So you've got to do that. Just for the sake, there's some people just completely insolent and they don't want it. They're just, you've just got to keep your distance. So please, I understand that. But notwithstanding, we want to make sure we establish peace. What's coming out of you is what? Peace. Go to this one scripture, last scripture, I think, the second or last. James 1, verse 19. James 1, verse 19. Hallelujah. James 1, verse 19. It says, so then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to do what? Slow to get angry or full of wrath or wrath. So what, what I put here is this. What we want to do is, if we're going to have peace, we have to establish some behavior that's consistent with peace. And a lot of that is this. Are we willing to listen to one another in our homes? Are we, what is the kind of tone that we're speaking to with our loved ones? Are you listening to me? So you, we can't say we love one another and we're barking at one another. That's why some families, they're used to shouting at one another. They, they're angry. Their tone is angry all the time, just with simple things. So we have to watch that. We have to establish how are we communicating with one another? 
and stopping ourselves and realize, man, that kind of tone, that's not right towards my wife, to my children, people I claim to love. How can I be raising my voice and, and getting angry like that? Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? And so, so imagine everyone in the family living like this, talking to one another like this. We're talking about this peace in our homes. Again, this is normal. Someone say normal. normal. Peace. We want peace. So imagine everyone in your family, what's coming out of them is peace towards you. That you have family members, they have goodwill towards you. Someone say goodwill. goodwill. So goodwill, what does that mean? It means we want your best. Whatever is your endeavor in life, we want you to do well. Someone say peace. peace. Say it one more time. Peace. 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 And so um, I am closing real quick here. Um, go to this one, Romans 12. That's my last one, Romans chapter 12. So when you think like this, you know, Christmas season, what will empower it this Christmas, make it even different than previous years? Every gift you give, every card you write to family members, those in your home, they are extensions or expressions of your peace towards that person. So think that way, you know, that, that this is an expression. I, I really, I'm not just giving this because, I mean, you know, sometime at Christmas time, people give gifts because they have to. Think about that. In other words, this is a family member, and you know what? If I don't give this, they're not going to think so well of me. They're not going to like me anymore. Kind of a contradiction, really, at Christmas time. But you're going to say, that's not even supposed to be our motivation. Because suppose you can't afford a certain gift. Are you listening to me? So what's happening, let whatever that gift is, behind it, make that motivation. I want your well-being. I want your best. I want you to do well. So we're not just giving a cold gift. Could be a gift that's $1,000. That's not the issue. It's what. What's behind the giving of that gift? Uh, no, ma no matter what the, the um, past experience of you with that family member or relative, you know what? I want your best. We give that from our heart. Amen. So finally, um, Romans chapter 12, verse 18. It says, if it is possible, as much as it depends on you, do what? Live peaceably with all men. Now, if it says with all men, well, what about your family members? Peace. We want peace in our homes. And we're praying that this, this Christmas season will be a great time of peace. I mean, you, you being used by God to let someone know, I'm, I know I'm your relative, but I want you to know I love you. I care about you. I want your very best. See, that heart goes better than these Christmas cards. I never thought about this. I just said that. Way better than those Christmas cards. If your gift, what's behind your gift, is full of goodwill, shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. I want your best. And this gift is an expression. I want to add to that. I want to do my part of bringing into your life peace. Will you pray with me right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every person that's here today. Every person that has come together in person here and also online. We're not here by purpose. We're here, not here by accident. We're here in your purpose. We're here in your will. And I pray for every family. As they've heard this message today, let the peace of God fill their hearts. Let your peace rule in their hearts. Father, where there's been strife, contention, bitter arguments and fighting, let it be replaced with your peace. In the name of Jesus, let every believer, every follower of Christ, let them recognize like never before that at the new birth, your love, your peace was imparted into their lives. Let them, let the peace of God rule in their hearts. As we've shared your word briefly, they know more accurately now how to cooperate with this peace. 
Let your peace rule in their hearts. Let that peace flow out of them into their homes, into their families. Let them be expressions of your peace in every relationship, every connection, every coworker, every, their work environment, their neighborhood. Let the peace of God flow through them this Christmas season. Now, Father, we thank you for this. We speak your blessing upon every heart and upon every life in the name of Jesus. Say this after me, God in heaven, I thank you. You are my father. By virtue of the new birth, Jesus is my Lord. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old is past, the new has come. I'm no longer filled with hate, unforgiveness, and bitterness. Your love is in my heart. Your peace is in my heart. I let your peace now rule in my heart. And I let that peace flood my life, flood my soul, impact every relationship in my home and family. And by your grace, where I've wronged people, including family members, I will make it right. I will live in peace, if at all possible, with all people. Thank you, Lord, for your peace in my home and in my family. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Will you obey that word today? Let the peace of God rule in your life. Now, Father, I thank you for your people today. As they enter this new week that you've given to us, I pronounce your blessing upon them. I thank you that they're blessed in their going out. They're blessed in their coming in. I thank you that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against them in judgment is condemned and shown to be in the wrong. I say they're in the right place with the right people doing right this week. They are blessed. They are a blessing. They ride upon the high places of the earth. I thank you, Father. Their children are taught of you. And they're blessed in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. 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 This week's going to be a great week. Amen. amen. Let that peace fill your lives, fill your homes. Amen. Again, be quick. If there's, Things can be, in many cases, just a simple apology. Simple repentance and, and then live out now a peaceful life in your home and family. Amen. Amen. We just love you and, and thank God for every person in Foundation for Life. Those of you who couldn't be here to, on, online, we don't, we're not ignoring you. We love you. We thank God for you. We just bless you and your family this week. Amen. Well, don't forget next week we're going to be here. This Wednesday will be our last uh, Wednesday uh, prayer and the word for the 2023. We'll take a break until the new year after that. And so um, we'll see you next week. All right. Bless you all. We love you.